Hey guys, and welcome back to now for something a little bit different, episode 36. Um, this week, guys, I'm going to be talking to you uh, about a little film that came out in 1990, um, and it's called The Shrimp on the Barbie. Um, it's a great little comedy starring Cheech Marin. Um, before I do that, though, I figured I would talk to you guys a little bit about what I had the chance to watch over uh, the last week or so. Um, I started my week off last week and i got a chance to watch a little netflix show called tires now tires guys is a comedy and it's essentially revolves around two main characters uh will and his cousin shane who run an automotive shop that's um kind of like on the verge of going uh, i guess bankrupt uh, essentially things aren't going too well and uh, it's a stupid comedy. Uh, the two play off each other well. Like I said, Shane's uh, Will's cousin who works with him. And essentially, he's always giving him shit. And it's just a stupid, dumb comedy. Um, I laughed a lot. I think it's worth your time. So definitely check that out. Um, like I said, I'm not going to go too much into detail, guys. Um, it is worth watching, like I said. So I definitely recommend that. Um, also, another one. I had the chance to watch uh, another dumb comedy um, called, I think it's called Tacoma FD. Um, and this stars a couple of the guys from uh, the Super Troopers. Um, and it basically, it's a, you know, a series about a bunch of firefighters um, and the wacky hijinks they get into. And it's kind of like a, kind of like some screwball comedy thrown in there. Um, if you like the, the stuff that Broken Lizard did, the guys that did Super Troopers or, or beer fest or any of those type movies, you'll probably get a, get a kick out of this. It's like I said, it's, it's a fun little movie or movie, a fun little show. Um, there's four seasons. Um, I'm about maybe halfway through the first season, but I'm having a good time with it. It's just a, a, a just a light, stupid, fun comedy. So um, those are both those are both worth checking out. So definitely make sure you check them out. Um, and after that, believe it or not, guys. I had a chance to catch a lot of comedies in this theme this week, guys. Um, I had a chance to catch um, a movie that came out in 94, starring my man Michael J. Fox. Um, and this is called Greedy. Um, and Greedy was directed by a guy named Jonathan Lynn. You guys might know Jonathan Lynn um, from stuff like My Cousin Vinny, or he directed the movie Clue, Um or even uh, Sergeant Bilko, which I think is an underrated classic. Uh, I don't think it did too well at the box office. Uh, but that's nor here nor there. Um, besides Michael J. Fox, we have Dan, uh, as playing the lead roles, Daniel. You have Kirk Douglas, Bill Hartman, uh, Ed Bagley Jr., Kirsten Dunst, believe it or not, in a very small role, and Nancy Travis. And essentially, the idea of this movie is Kirk Douglas is this rich guy. He's old and um, he has a bunch of relatives that are basically all conniving to uh, get in the will. And they'll pretty much do anything they can to try to get a piece of his money and kiss his ass so that when he dies, uh, they can get put in the will. And, you know, because they're greedy, <laughs> you know, um, Michael J. Fox is at his core um, someone that's always stayed away from the family drama uh, and all the the hoopla surrounding his crazy relatives. Uh, but he gets drawn in uh, and he tries to do the right thing. Um, along the way, he falters a little bit, but, you know, at the end, uh, he does the right thing. And, and it's a it's a cute little comedy. Um, it's got some really good acting. Of course, Michael J. Fox, how can you go wrong? You know, and uh, believe it or not, like I said, I don't know how I missed this one, guys. I mean, there's so many different movies out there. I'm bound to miss um, a movie here or there, even some of my favorite actors' resumes. Um, but Michael J. Fox is one of those guys. I, I mean, I've always loved him. You know, I think like most of us, you know, um, either fell in love with, you know, Back to the Future or like Teen Wolf. Or for me, I think it started off with Family Ties and really enjoying that sitcom as a kid. Uh, and then, of course, seeing Back to the Future and just being blown away. And then, you know, stupid stuff like teen wolf and you know secret of my success um but this one's a, a solid little uh, movie and um definitely worth checking out so i would 
highly recommend that guys um so like i said not a lot of stuff this week guys um or there's some other things that i probably won't talk about like i said i, I might actually uh review them um down the road so i don't want to uh play my hand too early if you will um so all that said um i guess right about now i'll get into our feature film which like i said is the shrimp on the barbie um this movie came out in 1990 um it's about an hour and a half so it's not too bad it goes by pretty quickly there's lots of laughs to be had um it only had a budget of five and a half million uh sadly it only made four hundred fifty-eight thousand, so it didn't do too well um i remember watching this i think probably like a lot of us if you've seen this um probably like on usa up all night or like tnt one of those type of things and i remember seeing it um and laughing back then and then I found that on good old Tubi um, has it now. Tubi has it, uh, Prime has it, and I want to say maybe Peacock has it. So it's 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 readily available, guys. Um, it's directed by a guy named Michael Galatliev. And I'm probably getting your name wrong, wrong Michael, so I do apologize. Um, now, he didn't do a ton of stuff, but he did stuff that you guys probably have seen before uh, besides the Shrimp on the Barbie, he's done stuff like Mannequin in 87, um, good old Hulk Hogan's movie Mr. Nanny in 93, a classic, if you will, um, A Kid in King Arthur's Court. Um, and then, believe it or not, he did, uh, I don't know if you guys remember the 80s band Starship. Well, he did Nothing's Gonna Stop Us Now, but he did the music video for that. So he also wrote the screenplay for Mannequin 2. Um, I don't know why he ended up not directing that, but he does have a screenplay credit for that as well. Um, on our writing staff, we have a couple guys. We have, and I'm doing my cheat sheet, guys. We have a guy named Grant Morris, uh, who did uh, The Return of the Swamp Thing in 89, uh, Dead Dog in 2001, stuff like that. Um, just bear with me, guys. Here, I'm trying to adjust this tripod. It's being a pain in the butt today. We have a guy named Ronald E. House. Um, who wrote stuff like Bullshot, uh, Footlight Frenzy, stuff like that, stuff I've never heard of. Maybe you guys have. Um, bear with me. My having some technical difficulties here, guys, today, as my my uh, little Kindle scribe here is not working with me, so I have to kind of play with it a little bit to try to get it to work because I have my notes here, and without my notes, I am lost. <laughs> some might say even with my notes, I'm lost, but that's nor here nor there. Um, our third writer is a guy named Alan Shearman. Um, he also did Bullshot Crumman, uh, Footlight Frenzy, and he did a parody of 2001 called 2001 A Space Travesty um, that stars Leslie Nielsen. Um, so not a lot of pedigree there, but you know what? Fuck pedigree, guys. They made a fun movie, um, which I'll get into in a little bit more in detail in a little bit. Um, our cinema photographer is a guy named James Bartle. James Bartle, you guys may know from The Quiet Earth in 85, The Good Wife in 87, um, stuff like uh, the cult classic, My Best Friend is a Vampire that came out in 87. You know, he's done a bunch of other stuff. Um, but those are a couple of the names where you guys might be familiar with titles. Um, also, we have, as a co-cinema photographer, a guy named Andrew Lesney. Now, Andrew Lesney um, has a pretty big pedigree. He did stuff like Babe in 95, Two of by the Sea in 96. Uh, he did all three of the Lord of the Rings movies and all three of the Hobbit movies. Um, he did the King Kong movie, so obviously he has a good working relationship with our man Peter Jackson. Um, he did I Am Legend in 07. Um, and he did... Uh, Russell Crowe's directorial debut, um, The Water Diviner, which came out in 2014. Um, so, you know, he's definitely been around the block a little bit. Um, now, when we head, head over to our music department, we have a gentleman named Peter D.K. Um, and he's done some fun stuff. He's done stuff like Death Spa, which came out in 88. Uh, uh, Born in East L.A., which came out in 87, which also, of course, stars our man Cheech Marin. Um, Final Jeopardy, which came out in 2001. Um, stuff like that, you know. Um, uh, heading over to our editing, we have a guy named 
Fred Chukalak. And Fred, again, uh, I'm horrible at pronouncing names, so guys, I do apologize. Um, he will be known for stuff like working on projects like Private School, which came out in 83. Um, Billy Jack coached at Washington, which came out in 77. Um, the Out of Towners, which came out in 1970. And believe it or not, he worked on that show, Hawaii 5 the original. Um, he has like 28 episodes. So um, the guy that's been around the block a little. Um, now, before I get into my cast, um, I figured I would tell you a little bit something about, um, I made the reference to this on my Facebook page yesterday about the name, this shrimp on the barbie. Um, it's interesting. Um, or at least I thought it was an interesting piece of trivia. The name, The Shrimp on the Barbie, um, came from a line in a series of Australian tourism TV ads um, that ran from 1984 to 1990 uh, in the US and the UK. And they starred um, good old Paul Hogan, good old Crocodile Dundee. And man, I really butchered that Australian accent, guys. I was really working on it too. I was, I was really proud of my fake Australian accent. Um, he features prominently in these ads, and uh, in these ads, he'll say, I'll slip a, an extra shrimp on the barbie for you. Uh, the phrase has become synonymous with uh, Australia um, for Americans, and is sometimes used in popular culture to reference uh, the country. So just a little interesting uh, tidbit of trivia, if you will. Um, just bear with me, because, of course, um, this is the day that uh, things don't want to work right, because my... Uh, Scribe is freezing up again, guys. Between that and my tripod being a pain in the ass, it's one of those uh, fuck you recording days, as I like to call them. <laughs> There's no other polite way to put it. It's like, God damn it. Why won't you work? Fucking work, God damn it. Um, but anyway, my uh, my rant will be over, providing my, my technical things work. <laughs> yeah, in our main role, we have uh, Cheech Marin, guys. Cheech Marin is playing Carlos. Um, of course, I think all of us know Cheech Marin. Um, he's notably known for stuff like Up in Smoke in 78, uh, Nice Dreams, Cannonball Run, After Hours, of course, Born in East L.A., which he also directed. Um, surprisingly, I haven't seen Born in East L.A. I need to, I need to change that. Um, he's been in stuff with Robert Rodriguez, like Desperado and From Dust Till Dawn. One of my all-time favorites, which I have covered in the past, uh, Tin Cup, um, Nash Bridges, the TV show. And uh, recently, he was in a, a really good movie with Woody Harrelson that came out last year called Champions. Um, I think it's you can find it on Peacock. Definitely worth seeking out. It's a great little comedy. Um, so that's our main star. Um, and I really don't know why this thing's being a pain in the ass today, guys, but everything is conspiring to not work. Uh, because yet again, my stupid tablet is uh, freezing on me, and I have to scroll over to the next page. So um, it's going to be one of those days, guys. Um, so I do apologize profusely. Um, following our band, uh, Carlos, our Cheech Marin, we have uh, our lead actress, Emma Sams. Now, Emma Sams um, pre predominantly worked um, in the soap opera world and with the show dynasty uh which came out in 85 and ran between 85 and 89 um she was in the movie delirious with john candy and she worked on uh, general hospital believe it or not um from 82 all the way to 2023 that's pretty impressive um people give these soap opera actors a lot of shit but man they gotta cram a lot of information they record non-stop I don't know how those people do it. And the pay isn't as good as obviously what the A-list actors are making. But um, it's a living, guys. And uh, that's pretty impressive. Um, next, we have Vernon Wells. Vernon Wells, um, he's playing Alex's uh, boyfriend, uh, Bruce. Um, he's done a lot of Australian stuff, uh, which would make sense because part of his movie was shot in Australia. Um, he was in stuff like Mad Max 2, The Road Warrior, uh, Weird Science, um, Commando, Inner Space, and Fortress. Um, so a nice little pedigree there. Um, next, we have Bruce Spence, who is playing the role of Wayne. Um, he is Carlos's friend, and uh, he's been in stuff like Mad Dog Morgan, 
uh, Mad Max Beyond the Thunderdome, Ace Ventura When Nature Calls, and Dark City. Um, so a nice little, also um, predominantly most of those films are also Australian films. Um, we have uh, Terrence Cooper, uh, who's playing Alex's dad. And he's been in Believe It or Not and stuff like Casino Royale, which came out in 67, the original one. Uh, Beyond a Reasonable Doubt came out in 80. Um, and Trespasses, which came out in 84. Um, so those are a couple things you may have seen him from. Um, we have Jeanette Cronin uh, playing the role of Maggie Ridley. Um, and she's playing uh, Alex's crazy cousin. Um, she's been in stuff like Dark City, uh, Mr. Accident, uh, The Rage in Placid Lake, um, Danny Deckchair, and Son of the Mats. Um, and then finally, rounding out the cast, we have Carol Davis um, playing the role of Dominique. Now, Dominique um, is Alex's best friend, and um, she's been in stuff like Piranha. Um, the Flamingo Kid, Mannequin, and It Looks Good Kill, which I actually talked about uh, not too long ago. Um, so that kind of gives you a general idea of um, what our cast looks like. Um, and now when I get into the story. Um, so essentially, guys, uh, the story of this, I'm going to try to simplify this as, uh, as easy as possible because I'm horrible when it comes to explaining stories, guys. Um, we have Cheech Marin uh, playing the role of Carlos. Uh, he's a guy that has been living in LA. He wants to start over. He moves to Australia. And um, after seeing these ads that I was talking about, starring our man, Paul Hogan, he moves to Australia to give his life a new start. And when he gets to Australia, um, he soon gets a job um, as a co-owner of a restaurant. He's working as a waiter, as well as a singer in this restaurant. Uh, and it's not long before they have a wealthy client that comes in. Uh, the wealthy client that comes in is Emma Sam's character, Alex. And Alex wants to throw this big birthday party for her father. Um, so while they're having this big birthday party, she introduces everyone to her boyfriend, which is this uh, soccer player named Bruce, who's kind of an idiot and a bit of an asshole. Um, her father doesn't like this guy at all. Um, wacky hijinks ensue, and the party goes horribly wrong due to Carlos. Um, and basically, they they have a cake that's frozen. He tries to microwave it, and the cake becomes super soft. Cake goes flying everywhere. The birthday party's ruined. Um, Alex tries to explain to her father that she wants to marry this guy, Bruce. And he realizes right off the get go, he's an idiot and that'll never happen. And she says, well, I'm going to marry him anyway. And he's, she says to him, well, I'm going to marry him. I love this guy. Well, I don't care what you think. And he's like, no, I forbid it. And basically they come to an agreement where he says, I'll let you marry the next guy that you pick, but not this guy. So this is where our story gets interesting. She approaches, Alex approaches this Carlos and she goes, hey, listen. Uh, my father won't let me marry this guy, but he agreed to this arrangement where I'll, he'll let me marry the next guy that I meet, providing he'll approve it. It doesn't matter what. So they come to this agreement where she's going to pay him $5,000 and pretend to be her, her next guy that she's going to marry. Um, she brings Carlos to her big family estate. And of course, it's the fish out of water. He's just a regular dude um, trying to fit in with all these stuffy rich people. Um, but he's being like super obnoxious um, and he's playing every stereotype you can imagine, you know, and trying to be like just a smart ass about everything and just piss everybody off. So the idea obviously is so that they hate him so much, it'll get under everybody's skin. And essentially Alex can then go back to her father and say, oh, well, see this Bruce wasn't that bad after all. Maybe you should have let me marry, just marry Bruce. Um, and of course, you know, the father gets a wind of this, this plot that they're plotting to, to trick him. Um, 
And then he embraces Carlos and they end up becoming buddies. And of course that infuriates Alex um, and makes matters even worse um, because now she realizes her, her little plan has backfired instead of trying to convince her dad that Bruce wasn't such a bad option. Her father got wind of the whole idea. And like I said, uh, everything goes away. Um, essentially after a little bit of this crazy wacky hijinks um alex kind of gives up and realizes her dad for whatever reason likes carlos uh and she's like oh shit this isn't going good um so she decides to take a road trip with carlos um to go meet bruce at uh the hotel he's staying at um and along the way, their car breaks down. And unfortunately, they gave away their spare tire to a person on the road whose also, car also broke down. So now they're stranded out in the middle of nowhere. Um, and they end up having to hitchhike to the hotel. Um, they end up kind of realizing they have some chemistry, um, despite their backgrounds and differences. Um, and when they get to the hotel, um, Carlos uh, runs into Bruce. And as he runs into Bruce, he sees um, one of Alex's best friends happen to be coming out of the hotel, um, putting her clothes on, essentially. Um, he kind of, of course, is upset by this because at this point, he's kind of developed feelings for Alex. But he just accepts it for what it is. And he just takes off. Um, he's like, fuck it. Um, Alex is kind of surprised, um, not aware that her, this rich sports guy, Bruce is cheating on her. She wonders where Carlos went. Um, she can't figure it out. The next day she's watching TV and they actually have a clip of, uh, Bruce cheating on Alex with her best friend Dominique in this ridiculous scenario that I will let you guys watch and see for yourself. Um, so she realized Bruce is kind of a piece of shit. Go figure. And uh, she ends up uh, trying to track down Carlos because um, she realizes that at this, this point she kind of did develop some feelings for the guy and she realizes he's actually a pretty good dude. Um, he's nowhere to be found. Um she confronts Bruce about him cheating on her. Uh, and then at the end of the day, she manages to find Carlos um, right before he's about to take off to America. Uh, and of course, they end up together and happily ever after. And essentially, I'm um, giving you the very truncated version of the story um, instead of going and breaking down every last detail of the story for you guys. Um, but it's it's a cute little comedy. Um, like I said, today is not my best day for recording, guys, uh, between technical difficulties. And uh, I guess I'm a little rusty. It's been two weeks. I don't know. Getting lazy. Uh, it's not my best recording today, so I apologize. But uh, that's that's essentially what you're looking at as far as the story goes. Like I said, it's a cute little story. Um, it is a romantic comedy. Um, I think it qualifies under the channel of being a little bit different because there's a lot of great gags. There's a lot of great comedy. Um, it's not your typical one. Um, there's lots of stupid subplots. Um, I won't even go into too much. Like Alex has a crazy cousin named Maggie, uh, who we meet, who becomes obsessed with Carlos. Um, and you just got to watch that and you'll be like, what the fuck am I watching? <laughs> um, so there's a couple of like little stupid, funny moments like that. Um, it's something I feel like, um, some people have seen, um, but I feel like it's one of those movies, even though it played a lot, it, when I talk to people, it's not one people that people recognize. Some people are like, oh, okay, I think I know that one. Um, I think it deserves some love. Um, so I would definitely go ahead and check that out if you can find it, guys. It's definitely worth your time. Um, and yeah, that's um, pretty much that wraps up uh, today's episode, guys. Um, like I said, great group of people involved in the project fun little movie um definitely check it out um so now it's time where i recommend some shows you guys should be watching so first i'll start with of course my boys brad and troy over at not a bomb 
check those guys out every week. They take a movie um, that was either a, either a critical failure or a commercial failure at the box office, and they determine whether or not it's really worthy of that title. Um, this week, they actually tackled, what did they tackle? The new Conan movie, the one that came out about 10 years ago or so, I want to say. Um, and they're joined um, by our good buddy Sam from The Gentleman's Guide to Midnight Cinema. Um, so that was a really great episode. Um, so be sure to check out their podcast, The Not A Bomb Podcast. Uh, make sure you rate it, guys, and check out their Facebook page. Um, and if you're already a fan, guys, check out um, the link they have on their podcast because they just dropped some really killer T-shirts over at, I want to say, T Public, But it's if you go to their podcast, it's in the link. Really, really cool designs. So uh, check out the Not A Bomb guys. Um, also, I, of course, have to mention Watch Skip Plus with Jose and Alex. Um, these guys do the Lord's work by every week going to the movie theaters and uh, tackling uh, the stuff that's currently playing in movie theaters. Um, and they give it a really solid review and determine whether you should watch, skip, or check it out. Um, as well, they also have a plus part of the show where each week um, we'll, they'll both talk about something new that they're tried out. And it might be a new book they've read or a new piece of technology or skincare product. It could be anything. Um, and they just do a little plug for that. So um, that's another great show with my buddy Jose and, and Alex. Definitely worth your time. Um, and then, of course, we have The Gentleman's Guide to Midnight Cinema, uh, the godfathers of cinema, if you will, with Will and Sam. Uh, every week, these guys are um, finding movies for us um, and giving really great reviews. And uh, they do stuff from like the new Roadhouse movie to um, little things that are a little more obscure. Um, they have such a, a wide range of diversity uh, in the film's that they talk about um, and, and they're just really great. So definitely check them out. Um, and then also a shout out to um, the guys over at Raiders of the Podcast. Um, these guys are awesome. These guys over at Raiders of the Podcast, what they do is really cool. So they'll talk about sometimes like two or three different films and then they'll kind of like duke it out in the end and determine um, which film they thought was the best of the two or the three films that they watched that week. Um, and those guys are also, like I said, a really not another really good uh, podcast. Um, so definitely check these all out, guys. They're all worth your time. Um, and um, I will hopefully be back um, next week. I'm trying to stick to a weekly schedule, guys. Um, and I'm not going to lie. Uh, between life and um, doing primarily um, solo recording now, again, um, it's hard to, to try to stay on schedule, um, but I'm trying. So uh, hopefully I'll, I will have something new for you. Um, so definitely check out the YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe. Um, check out the Facebook page. And believe it or not, I'm, even on TikTok, guys, I do little promos for the, whenever I have a new episode. So I hope you guys have a great week and I will see everybody soon.